Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at our D-Bot and the linear rail upgrade. I'm Jay and this is my 3D adventure. Okay, so what I thought we'd do uh, first of all in this video is just have a look at the parts that we're actually going to be replacing. Um, so there are 3D printed parts on the ends of the um, rail here, which is our X axis. So we're going to be changing the Y axis to start with. So at the moment we have basically two printed parts, um, some wheels and then some printed um, spaces for the wheels. Um, so what we're actually going to be doing is replacing all of this section here with four separate pieces. So these all these parts here are um, from a designer on Thingiverse called Nick Rimmer. So be sure to check out his um, page. And let me just give you um, a close up on some of these parts. If I can get the camera to focus. So hopefully that's clear enough for you. So this part is a basically a direct replacement for this part here. Um, and then we have a back piece for that. And then a bottom piece which will hold the linear rail carriage. Uh, and then a top piece to sort of lock it all in to place. Um, so these are all printed in um, Fibrology White Pet G. Um, and these were printed in, I believe, five perimeters, 33% infill, and then four top and bottom layers. Um, and this is the same values that I printed all of the other D-Bot parts in. Um, and they worked really well. They've been completely um, solid, um, and I've not seen any issues with them, so I figured I'd use the same settings again, basically. So these are the printed parts, and these are one set for one side, and I've got the other set for the other side. And then obviously we've got our linear rails that I spoke about in the last video. So these are from um, the seller on AliExpress, which is CNA Mechanical Parts Store. So there'll be links to these and the printed parts in the description. So really, the only thing that is left for me to do is now to install all of these parts. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then when we come back, I can give you a more detailed view um, of everything that's gone into the install. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so welcome back everyone. Um, so it's been a couple of days since the last part of the video you watched, um, and I've now completed the y-axis linear rail upgrade so I just want to briefly say what was involved in doing that upgrade it basically meant um, undoing all the belts um, undoing the previously assembled printed parts on the end of this rail which is the x-axis um, trans transferring the bearings from the old printed parts to the new printed parts and then basically putting it all back together. So the whole of the extruded carriage here has to come off um, and then you can take this rail away. Um, so basically it was just a matter of taking everything apart or reversing the installation steps that we took when we first built the printer. Um, now I would say if you are, if you've already got a D-Bot um, whether this is worth an upgrade for you, I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you're building a D-Bot at the moment, I would certainly say it's an easier installation than what the the, bearing, the v stop wheels were. Um, it's just, it feels a lot more solid uh, in the on the gantry, on the, the rails. Um, so I'm very glad I did it. So what I'm gonna do is just reposition the camera uh, and give you some closer up shots of the actual assembly. So if you just bear with me and I'll be back. 
Okay, so here we are uh, looking at the left hand side of the, the D-Bot uh, and this basically I just want to show you the back section first and then I'll move the camera to show you the front. So basically this whole uh, assembly here is held together with four 40mm M3 bolts uh, two on the top, two on the bottom and this basically sandwiches the whole thing together. Um, so the bottom part of the printed part is what holds the carriage. Um, let me just move that camera down a second. So that's under here basically. So the rail is actually on the bottom of the extrusion and that's held in place with four uh, M3 10mm bolts with T-nuts on the end. Um, and they actually went on a lot easier than I expected them to. So that's how they're held in. Um, just pan that up a little bit. So yeah, so the back is not really much to see. Um, so I'll just move the camera to the front and I can show you uh, basically where the belts run and how the extrusion is attached. Okay, so now we're basically looking at the front of the left side of the printer uh, and you can see that the the extrusion from the R x-axis attaches to this printed part by these bolts so there's one on each side and then one on the top and bottom um, and this was exactly the same as the previous printed part um, and then you have the belts run along these bearings here again exactly the same from the previous printed part so all of that hardware is just transferred from one to the other um, and then it's just assembled back in together so at the moment I haven't got a linear rail on our x-axis, just the two y-axis sides. Um, but Nick Rimmer, who, have, who was the designer of this part, I believe also has um, other models for what I think he's called it as a re, re bot or a red bot. Um, and there'll be links in the description to his Thingiverse page. Um, but I'm going to be having a look at a later date at uh, upgrading the y, the x-axis as well because um, I want to do something a little bit different with our extruder anyway but yeah so just to basically talk about this upgrade it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be um, and I think it has made a lot of difference to the stability of the axis so what I'll just do is I'll just move it around a bit so you can see it moving so if I just home the machine, and then I'll um, home the Z, and then I'll just rehome it. But yeah, I'm really happy with um, how everything's gone back together. So the only thing to note um, is that I've lost a little bit on the Y-axis build volume. Um, the reason for that is that the previous printed parts um, actually had an offset to sort of gain back a little bit of space. Um, but it's, it's only about 10 mil, so it's not really much of an issue. Um, uh, and I didn't really have to change anything else because the end stop is just raised up a little bit um, to to hit the side of the printed part and it works absolutely perfectly so yeah let me just reposition the camera and I can close this video out okay so that's basically another upgrade to the D-Bot done um, as I said in that little bit of video if you have already built your D-Bot with the mini V-Stop wheels this is not necessarily an upgrade that you'll see a lot of informants on the print quality necessarily um, I've done a couple of prints and to be honest the print quality was really good before and after um, the upgrade so there's certainly no decrease in quality which is very important um, 
But yeah, if you're building a D-Bot at the moment or thinking about it, I would certainly consider having linear rails. Um, they're just a lot more sturdy and I personally was starting to see a little bit of wear and tear on the wheels. So it's certainly something to consider. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you're looking for any printer parts or filament, then please check out my website. You'll find the link down below. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.